This is the first of two videos about small world networks. When we study social networks, two features stand out. First, we find many triangles in the network. When two people have a friend in common, they are more likely to be friends with one another. More formally, this phenomenon is known as the triadic closure property. When a network has lots of local triangles, we say that it is highly clustered. The second property of social networks is the existence of short paths. For any two people, we can connect them via a surprisingly short chain of friendships. Speaking globally, we say that the network has small diameter. Now these two properties seem almost at odds. High clustering suggests that the graph has a dense local structure. We will address these questions by considering a very simple network model introduced by Watts and Strogatz. Their small world model successfully fuses high clustering and small diameter. This simple model from 1998 is another iconic result from the early days of network science. We start by defining the clustering coefficient of a vertex. Starting at vertex i, we look at its neighbors. Every pair of neighbors offers an opportunity to form a triangle. The clustering coefficient is the fraction of actual triangles among these possible triangles. For example, in this green network, the central vertex has six neighbors. So therefore there are six choose two, or 15 ways to pair them up. And among these 15 pairs, only two are connected by edges. So the clustering coefficient of the central vertex is 2 over 15. Meanwhile, in this peach-colored network, the central vertex also has six neighbors. But this neighborhood is far more connected, with eight out of the total triangles present. More generally, we can talk about the clustering coefficient of the network as a whole. To calculate the global clustering coefficient, we divide 3 times the number of triangles by the number of connected triples. By a connected triple, we mean a path of length 2. In other words, we are picking two neighbors of the middle vertex and asking whether those two are friends as well. And note that an existing triangle is counted by three different connected triples. Each vertex gets a chance to be the middle vertex of the connected triple. Let's work through an example. This particular network only has two triangles. So the numerator of the clustering coefficient is 3 times 2. So how about the number of connected triples? Well, the number of connected triples centered at vertex i is just the degree of i choose 2. And we must sum over all vertices in order to obtain the full denominator. Dealing with vertices 1 through 6 in order, we get 3 choose 2, or 3, and 2 choose 2, 1. 3 choose 2, which is 3, another 1. Uh, 4 choose 2, which is 6, and another 2 choose 2, and so the denominator sums to 15. Next, we define the diameter of the network. Intuitively, this is the farthest distance between two vertices in the network. In other words, the diameter is the longest, shortest path. This example network has diameter 5. This is Zachary's Karate Club, which we talked about in our video on community detection. Having defined our quantities of interest, we are almost ready to talk about the Watts and Strogatz small world model. First, we will talk about two networks on the opposite ends of the spectrum. As we talk about these two models, I'm going to make reference to some explicit formulas, but I'm not going to prove them here. These statements are just to give you a sense of the two extremes. We will perform some explicit calculations for the small world model, which is the one that we really care about. The network on the left is what I'll call a ring world. The vertices are arranged in a circle, and each one is linked to its C nearest neighbors. This ring world has very high clustering. In fact, we can show that almost three quarters of the connected triples are joined into a triangle. However, this graph has a very large diameter. It is not hard to show that the longest distance in this path is actually 2n over C. The network on the right is an erdos grenier random graph with c n over two edges. This random graph has the exact same number of edges as the ring world, but it has very few triangles. On the other hand, it does have very small diameter. Indeed, these random edges make it easy to jump around the graph, so that the longest path is actually order log n steps. 
In fact, having a path whose length is logarithmic in the size of the network is the gold standard for having short paths. Now here is the watts strogatz evolution process that takes us from the ring world to the random world. Starting from the ring world, we randomly rewire the edges, one at a time, meaning that we replace a ring edge with a random one. Let P denote the fraction of edges that we have rewired. So when P is equal to 0, we're in the ring world, and when P is equal to 1, we have an erdos ringy random graph. Now an amazing thing happens during this process. Somewhere along the way, we reach a state where we still have a lot of the clustering from the ring world, but we have enough of the random edges to create shortcuts that gives us a diameter that is logarithmic in the network size. Here is a visualization of this process that tracks both the clustering coefficient and the shortest path length. The ring world has high clustering, the green curve, and large diameter, the purple curve. The random world has low clustering and small diameter. In between the two, we find that there is a small world regime where clustering is high and diameter is low. In the remainder of this video, I will convince you that this small world regime does actually occur. The analysis of the original watts strogatz model is rather complicated. The rewiring process creates dependencies between edges, and these are difficult to deal with. So we will look at a variant of their model with much more independence between the edges. This resulting model has the same character as the watts strogatz model, but it is much easier to digest mathematically. We start with the ring world, in which every vertex is connected to its C nearest neighbors. This graph has C n over 2 ring edges, since every vertex has degree C. Now rather than rewiring these existing edges, we will just add some completely random edges. In particular, for every edge on the graph, we flip a weighted coin to decide whether to add a random edge as well. So on average, we will add C n p over 2 random edges. We call these random edges shortcuts, since they zip across the middle of the ring world. So let's begin for real. We start by characterizing the ring world. We place n vertices in a circle, and then we connect each vertex to its c nearest neighbors. Note that it has c over 2 left neighbors and c over 2 right neighbors. It can be shown that each vertex has clustering coefficient of about 3 quarters, and that the average path length is n over 2c, which is linear in the size of the network. You will prove both of these facts in the accompanying practice activity for this video. Once you have done this, you have confirmed that we have high clustering and large diameter. Next we add our random edges we will decide to add n over 2 random edges. This is analogous to taking p is equal to 1 over c in the watts strogatz model. Adding these n over 2 shortcut edges reduces our clustering coefficient from about 3 quarters to 3 times c minus 2 over 16 times c minus 1. This is at least 1 eighth when c is greater than or equal to 4, and it's closer to 3 16th when c is much larger. This is still relatively high. A constant fraction of our connected triples are indeed in triangles. Meanwhile, the diameter has become small. We will sketch an argument that the average path length is order log n squared. A more detailed analysis actually shows the diameter is order log n, but we'll favor simplicity over best possible for this introductory video. We have added n over 2 random shortcuts to our ring world. Next, we are going to partition the ring into blocks of size log n, and we are going to treat these blocks as megavertices in an erdos ringy random graph on capital N vertices, where capital N is equal to n over log n. Our n over 2 shortcuts become random edges between the block vertices. A simple argument shows that the little n over 2 is bigger than the capital N log capital N. We can then use two facts that we know about the erdos ringy random graph. Number one, when the average degree is log the size of the graph, then the random graph is connected. And number two, 
the diameter of this connected erdos Randy random graph is at most the log of the size of the graph. Now since the random graph on these mega vertices is connected, that means we can travel between any of them. Furthermore, we can travel between them in log capital N steps, which is also log little n steps. Furthermore, paths between these mega vertices have length log capital N. And log capital N is actually big O of log little n. Therefore, we can travel between blocks in at most order log n steps. Now in order to get from one random shortcut to another, we're also going to have to traverse within blocks. But each block has size log n, so it takes at most log n steps to navigate within a block. To find our total path size, we just multiply these two numbers together, and we find that the diameter of our graph is at most log n squared. And this confirms that our small world is indeed small. Today we have talked about a small world model that is very similar to the iconic watts strogatz model from 1998. This model has high clustering and small diameter. However, it does have a disadvantage. Our short paths are due to shortcuts that are entirely random. Therefore, finding the overall short path is very hard. We have no clue which direction to go unless we map out the entire network. But in reality, people know how to use their social networks to find short paths between acquaintances. And next time we will adapt the small world model by adding navigability as a requirement.